Hey, welcome back. Candidates are lining up on both sides of the aisle to succeed Congressman David Trone in Maryland's 6th District, which covers areas like Garrett, Allegheny, Frederick, and parts of Montgomery counties. We've been talking with as many candidates as we can to hear what they bring to the table. And one of them is Joel Rubin, a Democrat in the race who's up late with me tonight here on the Final Five to talk about that and more. Welcome and good to see you. It's great to be with you, Jim. Uh, you, have, uh, you have worked in politics, or not necessarily politics, but in government for, for, for a long while. You were a State Department official. Uh, when you looked at this possibility of running, what motivated you to get into the race? You know, Jim, right now we're in a crisis nationally. We're in a crisis for our democracy. We're in a crisis for the rights of the American people. And I have a background and a bio that integrates all levels of government. I've been a passionate public servant for years. And we have to fight right now for our democracy, and that's why I'm running. You know, it's interesting because we talk with so many candidates from both sides here, and, and everybody, I think everybody comes to it, comes to the table with a different perspective and, and a different idea of what the priorities would be. Right now, though, uh, looking at what you've accomplished in your time, again, you worked in the Obama uh, State Department, uh, you have been quite vocal on a lot of international issues as well, and I'm curious, how much does that shape your, your approach to this race? Because a lot of people say it's about the economy, it's about this, it's about that, but, but there are a lot of problems on the international front right now, too. Yeah, you know, Jim, certainly uh, all the issues that we're talking about, the economy, uh, transportation, women's health care, fighting climate change, all of that, those are top of mind. But without a doubt, in public service at the federal level, one needs to have experience in national security. That's a baseline qualifier. A Congress doesn't just do half the job. Congress does the whole job. Even this past week, we saw a supplemental fight over the national security spending integrated with the border bill, then not part of the border bill. Uh, that's a major fight that we need to make sure we're paying attention to as Democrats, and that's a key aspect of my candidacy. That's different from the others, and, and that's something I'm very proud of. One of the reasons uh, that you've come uh, onto our radar, too, is you've been quite vocal over the last several months. Uh, your expertise has been used a lot of the cable networks just about what's been happening right now in uh, Israel uh, and, 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 and Gaza. Uh, I'm curious, as you see that playing out right now, what should the United States' role be in, in handling this Right now, what we need to be doing is leaning in on the diplomacy, making sure that this war does not spread regionally, that it is contained between Israel and Hamas. And we need to be supporting Israel in its fight against Hamas. But at the same time, we cannot lose sight of the humanitarian impact. The Palestinian people need support. They need the aid that, frankly, the Republicans in Congress have blocked the nearly $10 billion of aid. And the United States, we have a key role in ensuring that there is a horizon the next day. And that means a two-state solution between Israel and the Palestinians. There are rumors of the the idea of a Palestine state being declared or recognized by the president, I think that's heading in the right direction. When you look at the Congress right now, and it's a very slim majority for Republicans, but a majority nevertheless, mm -hmm. uh, is this a body right now that, that gets a full grasp of what the stakes are on the international stage, or is this where you feel like this would uh, be a void that you could fill? You know, Jim, behind closed doors, and I sat in many classified settings with members of Congress, I was the senior liaison to the House for the State Department, for Secretary Kerry. Uh, behind closed doors, these members get it. They understand that they're real national priorities. But then when the, the lights come on, suddenly they're afraid. They're afraid to speak truth to the American people about the risks right now facing our country, and that's not something that I'm going to allow other members to get away with. Uh, we need to make sure that we're standing up to Russia, that we have an overall vision for how to deal with China, that we are doing all we can to bring peace to the Middle East. Uh, these are issues that Americans care about, they pay attention to, and Congress, while many members don't want to talk about it, they think about it, that's something I would fight for. Uh, you, back to uh, an issue that you brought up, and, and I, when, you, when you walked into the studio, you handed me one of your cards for the campaign, and I see, I see your family <laughs> uh, right here, and I see uh, your, your wife and daughters, and you mentioned women's issues right yeah. now. Uh, clearly, a lot of people look at that and they just perceive that to mean abortion rights, but it is a big umbrella that I think a lot of candidates are, are looking to delve more into. Yeah, look, Jim, uh, I'm a father of three teenage daughters, as you see there. My mother-in-law lives with us, and I have a very powerful, uh, accomplished wife. Uh, we are rolling back women's rights in this country. Women are not treated equally in the workplace. They are not compensated equally. Now we have the courts saying to women and across the country in many states that they don't have the right to choose what to do with their own body. Mm -hmm. It's offensive. And so that's an area that I clearly am 
concerned about, passionate about on a personal level, but it's not just about me, it's about the whole country. We can't have a country succeed if we're holding people back. We need everybody to be free in this country and have the ability to make their own choices about who they are and who they want to be, and women need to be at the top of mind. You, uh, you served on Chevy Chase Council uh, yeah. as well for a number of years. Yeah. What's the biggest change in campaigning for uh, a, a local office like that and, and uh, moving on to a district that is very large and, and uh, a, a, a very, very wide disparate uh, uh, district you're looking to serve. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, Jim, you know, the best thing about serving on a town council, and I served for three terms for six years, is that uh, you're doing constituent services every single day, 24-7, and this was like 12 months a year times six years. This is a full-on job, and that's what I love, engaging with the constituents, dealing with issues that people care about. It might be a traffic sign today, it might be a construction yeah. tomorrow, but all of that matters, and so it's conversations with people, with constituents, with voters and future voters. Uh, that's what really makes politics fun. Joel Rubin, what's your website? RubinforMaryland.com. That's easy. Good to meet you. Thanks for coming in tonight. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Final Five is back right here.